In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In The Last Days television program from myself, Martin Blackham. Natalie's behind the scenes today, so she says hello to you and welcome to the very special Christmas edition of In The Last Days television program going out on Revelation TV on Christmas Day. So we're joining you. Great to be with you and, we're great, and it's great to be part of your festivities for this day. Uh, we have a very special guest in the studio for the special Christmas program, Pastor Stephen Curry from Calvary Baptist Church. Great to have you with us. Thank you, brother. Thank you for so much oh. for coming across Thank and uh, coming in, into the studio today to be with us and uh, to tell us a bit about yourself and the, and the work you're doing here uh, in Bethlehem and uh, to share the Christmas program with us. And we've got a bit of uh, Christmas atmosphere here today, so great to be with you. And uh, Stephen, first of all, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your background because uh, you're from Bethlehem, but you, you're working now in Jerusalem with the, the church here. But you, you're from a, um, a Christian background in the sense that your dad was, was, uh, started the church originally in Bethlehem. Is that, is that right? Yes, yeah. In fact, uh, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, wish your family a Merry Christmas, and wish the viewers um, from all over the world, Europe and so forth, a Merry Christmas as well. Um, I was born in Jerusalem. And I grew up in the city of Bethlehem all my life. I grew up through the first intifada, the second intifada, the uprising, the war. You name it, I've seen it, I've experienced it. And, and when, when people say the, the joy of Christmas is, is there, uh, I think when you go through war in times of trials and tribulations, and then you get a Christmas where things are calm to some extent, uh, that, that, that calmness and that, that, that takes Christmas to the next level and takes the joy of Christmas to the next level. And at the end of the day, the joy of Christmas is not the decorations, it's Jesus Christ. And that is the focus. He is the center of our lives and He is the center of the holiday. He is the reason for the season we celebrate. He is that reason. So uh, it's great to be sharing this with you uh, today because we know that um, you know, the programs go out, Stephen, and uh, they're really informing the people. And we want to tell them a bit uh, today on the Christmas special about what's happening in Bethlehem. Uh, we all know it as the, in fact, people will be singing at this time the old little town of Bethlehem and the carols and thinking about Bethlehem. But we want to know what's the reality, what's, what's it really like to have to live there. Uh, you you come, have to come through a checkpoint to come into Jerusalem you know, the, the, the situation with the Palestinian Authority. So what's the, what's the reality of having to live in Bethlehem today in 2013? Well, to answer that question, Brother Martin, I want to take you back to my childhood days. I think it's important why, because I, I like to compare how it was, you know, maybe 20, 20 plus years ago to comparing it to today. And if I, if I go back to maybe when I was 9, 10 years of age, you, you felt, you experienced the atmosphere of Christmas, because of the population was, uh, the majority were Christian, um, uh, over 60, 70 percent were Christian in that community. Um, the, the atmosphere was different, the, the tension was, was a lot less, even though at that time Bethlehem was under the Israeli government, um, now it's under the Palestinian Authority. It, there's, it's just, it's, a lot has happened. So going back to it, oh, nine or ten years of age, my, my parents and I would walk down the street, it's called the Manger Street, we walk down and you start to see all these fancy decorations and um, the lights and the trees and so forth. But it wasn't only with the lights and the decorations, but it was the people's, the hearts, the smiles on their faces. Um, you recognize people's faces. You saw, you, you saw people that you knew. You recognize. You saw them at church or you'd see them at a celebration. You'd see them at, a, at, a, at an event uh, where comparison to today, um, Christmas has become more of a commercialized concept. And, and, and in some ways, people have made it a national, national thing. A national holiday. Some people have made it into more uh, a political holiday. Some people have made it into um, a, their own a, something to celebrate just for the sake of celebrating. So my, our position, myself and our ministry as a Calvary Church and the Holy Land Missions and, and our vision, our focus is to remind people that regardless whether it's be 90s and the 21st century or 2000 years ago, we have to remember that Christmas isn't about the fancy celebration, isn't about the, the trees and so forth, which is these are nice 
nice things, I think, decorative things to add to the celebration. But we must not get away from the main focus. The main focus is that Jesus Christ came. And the main focus is Jesus Christ came to give us the ultimate gift. And uh, a lot of times you see people exchange gifts. I exchange gifts with my family and we do all that stuff. But the greatest exchange we can give is the message that Jesus Christ came because he loves the world and there is hope and there is peace. And that peace comes through knowing Christ. And that is why we today, this Christmas, this celebration of Christmas, we're, we're, we're bringing it back. We're saying Christmas is for Jesus, nobody else's. And that is our theme this year. Christmas is for Christ and no one else's. Now, the, well, one of the things you do, you uh, have an outreach uh, from the church at, at Christmas in Bethlehem. And you, you have a, I think, uh, you have a banquet that you, where you feed people, is that right? We actually have several banquets. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people focus on Bethlehem because, again, that's, that's the birth city of Christ. But, you know, Christmas in Israel and the Holy Land starts on, you know, around the 21st, 22nd of December, goes all the way till January the 14th. Because you have the you have many denominations celebrated. You have the Greek Orthodox, you have the Catholics, you have the Armenians, you have the Syrians. So it goes all the way up till January the 11th and 12th. And we actually, because of that setting, we actually take advantage of that setting and to do outreaches in almost every single major um, day or date that other denominations celebrated. So what do we do? Um, the, it starts out with Bethlehem. Uh, starts out with about 12 to 1400 people gathering. Um, many are Christians, many are non, some are Muslims. We'll bring them into one, one big hall and they know why they're coming. They're coming to, to hear about Jesus, to have a nice meal, to possibly go home with a, with a nice family care pack. And many Christians all in the world are standing behind us um, to, to get this going. And, and the neat thing about it is because of the stand and the support of many Christians like yourselves and others around the world standing with our ministries, that's allowed us now to do more and expand more, which now, it's, which now it's needing more people to stand with us because of that expansion. Everybody used to always pray and support this one big event. But now this one big event is sort of becoming a spiral effect where other cities were doing it. Because cities, some areas, they can't come to Bethlehem. Some areas are too far. Some cities is too dangerous for them to leave and come to Bethlehem. Some people can't be seen coming. So now we're sort of doing little celebration Christmases in pockets and in areas like Gaza and Jenin um, and Jerusalem and Jericho and Hebron and you name it. And in this year, we bring these people, we, we, we meet, them at, meet them at the door with a smile. We meet them at the door with a, with a gift card. We meet them at the door with a calendar, with a Christmas calendar. We meet them at the door with Christmas, Christmas and Christian CDs. We bring them in there. We do worship and, and teaching. And it's just a time to rejoice. And it ends with a sermon and a, and a preaching message. Um, and then at the end of that day, we turn off the lights and have a candle lit uh, a mem a memory to tell people that Christ now lives within our hearts. Um, that is the most important place because Christ goes out of us when he lives in our hearts. And if they'd like, I know that people are watching are getting excited about this. And if they want to help, we'll put the details on the screen, the um, website. .org, yes. And they can go on your website. And if they want to support you financially or pray for you, they, there's uh, information on the website. We'll put that on to make sure they, uh, they can reach you and get in touch with you. Now, uh, the, do you do a carol service on, on Christmas Day? Uh, you mean uh, Carol? Meaning driving around? You mean? No, uh, no. I mean like, uh, like actually, you know, that one of the tradition traditional churches they have a, uh, you know, on Christmas they have carol services. Oh yes, and yes, yeah. We we do. We have um, a, besides this big hall, what it is we meet a lot of new people at this big outreach. Twelve, fourteen hundred people. Sometimes we many we know, many we don't know. So we bring these these people that came to this hall and we we sort of have them fun, funnel into a church service about three days later. And as they come in and funnel into church service, we do a carol service at the church service itself. And uh, when people visit the website as well, there's a map direction to how to get to our church in Bethlehem as well because we have a carol service there, another sermon, another teaching, another time of food and fellowship. And it goes back to Christ's time. We like to feed people and we like to be fed as well, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And, and again, we are trying to remind people. And, and we, it started last year. We're trying to tell people Christmas is about Jesus. It's about nobody else but Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about the archbishop. It's not about the pastor. It's not about the, the, the orchestra. It's not about the musicians. It's not about the worship team. Christmas is about Jesus. I think when we keep it that way, Jesus will be glorified. And when Jesus is glorified, he's happy. When he's happy, Bible, God says, you know, he, he rejoices in, in the worship of his, of his people. So, um, and we want to rejoice Christ all the way from the city of Bethlehem. And, and this, this started last year with the battle with the billboard. And I know we're going to talk about that as well. Yeah, I, I was going to get, uh, move on to that next. The, the, it's very exciting, the, the work you're doing. And, uh, but the reality is that 
Not everybody's happy. And uh, like many of you who may be watching today as we come out to you on Christmas Day, you know, maybe going through battles uh, with their faith that as they're, you know, living life that not everybody's happy with what they're doing. And you've, you've been through so many battles. As I was doing the research for the program, I realized that you've had problem, you know, you've had a battle with the church building and the battle and all sorts of battles. So maybe start with the billboard and tell us a bit about that. Sure. Uh, just to, to uh, rewind a little bit, the, build, the, the building issue, that's in Jerusalem. Um, you know, we, we've been kicked out of several churches building in Jerusalem to a point where now nobody wants to rent us anymore. Uh, we might be home, even as I speak to you right now, uh, we could be homeless at any moment because nobody's willing to rent us. So our, our only option now is, uh, is to purchase our own location. But that's in Jerusalem. Now, to, to move back to Bethlehem again, we are having a battle with the, with the government there because of, of us being evangelicals. Uh, they deem us illegitimate. But that doesn't stop us from celebrating Christmas. That doesn't celebrate us, stop us from worshiping God. That doesn't celebrate us from praying. And I think a lot of people are shocked when persecution comes. Um, I think we ought to be shocked when persecution does not come. Because Jesus says in the, in, in the Gospel of John, uh, they will persecute you before they pers because they have, they have persecuted me before you. And that is a promise The persecution is coming. And let me give you a, a case scenario. Um, December of last year, my wife is, is, is an American, uh, married, uh, a beautiful American and wife from Florida. And, and you have two children. I have two children, a boy and a girl. I'm blessed with a healthy, happy family. So we're driving into Bethlehem, and Cherry, my wife, uh, makes a comment. She says, Stephen, I'm noticing less and less of Jesus is, is in the streets because, because every year they would decorate, you know, with Jesus and the Mary and the family and, you know, those called the, the happy family or the, or the family of Christ, you know, Joseph, the, Mary. The, the kind of nat the, the nativity set the nativity concept. set. We use, um, yeah, yeah well, people, you know, it's a universal uh, uh, thing and uh, out of lights or, or what be it. Even sometimes you see, even see the actual man-made built um, a manger scene concept. But this specific year in 2012, we, we didn't see anything. And then my wife says, we forgot who was talking about it. Um, you know, when sometimes when the wife says a suggestion, you sometimes it has to take the time to to, so, to but, register. So they were there was more things like with Father Christmas and Santa Claus. Santa Claus, it was Santa Claus bells, and that's it. Santa Claus and bells. And that was it. There was, it. There was no mention of Jesus. There was no mention of Jesus, and and then the, over the next thirty six hours, um, it, it kept burning on my heart that statement. It kept burning on my heart that statement. Well, somebody's got to. We got to do something about it. I, I remember within that 36 hours, I was into a store buying some Christmas lights. And there was a Muslim in there, uh, a very nice, moderate Muslim. He, uh, he said, you know, we, we celebrate Christmas with you guys. And he actually was showing me some of the stuff he's purchasing. And uh, I said, um, he's talking about how the, he likes to decorate his house with a tree. He's a Muslim. He has a tree outside his window with lights and so forth. And he's saying that, I, I, that this is something been burning in my heart for a long time because uh, the world is, is seeing the Muslims celebrate Christmas along with Christianity. And his statement was, hey, we are together, we're celebrating Christmas together, so we are one. I have no problem with Muslims or whoever wants to celebrate Christmas. I have no problem with them. Uh, but I tell them, my, my issue is this. You're celebrating Christmas, but not Christ. You're, you're celebrating Xmas, but not Christ. And that's, and I told him, my problem with that is, and I asked him two questions. I said, do you have Jesus in your home? He said, no. I said, do you know the real reason for, for Christmas? Uh, you know, he, he mumbled a few words that he probably heard on TV. Um, so obviously he didn't know the real reason for it. And I said, my, I said, my friend, um, I appreciate you buying these, these things, but you're celebrating Christmas without Christ. And I said, for me, you're not doing me a favor. You're doing me a disfavor. To fast forward a few hours, this was last year, fast forward a few hours, 4 a.m. in the morning, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. And, and that same statement that my wife said, we've got to do something about it. The Holy Spirit said, get up and do something. So I started to say, Lord, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do with this? Um, I was driving down the main street where all these lights are. We found the largest billboard, 1,245 square foot billboard. This thing is huge, Brother Martin. I mean, this thing is, is the size of a building. It's a huge billboard. The largest billboard on that manger street. So Which is the, is that the, the, the main, memory, is that the main road into The main Bethlehem? road that enters Bethlehem and goes up to the manger square, to the right, Nativity to the Church. the Nativity Church. The Nativity Church. Um, the main road. So I called the print shop, we, and I spoke to him, and I told him we have 24 hours to print it and put it up. And he said, why? I said, because I know if people catch wind, it will be stopped. The print shop didn't realize the seriousness of it. He said, okay, let's, let's print it. So we printed and put it up. Five days later, I'm driving to Bethlehem. I realize it's dark. Uh, it's after 5.36 p.m. and I, I called up the printer. There's no lights on the billboard. 
Uh, the billboard said this, Jesus Christ um, born to die and rose again. So let him into your heart so you might live. Merry Christmas with a big, big red bow. It was a simple statement. Jesus Christ born to die, uh, so let him into your heart so you might live. Merry, Merry Christmas. I called him about five days later. I said, uh, there's no lights on the billboard. He said, Pastor, I'm so embarrassed. I don't know what to tell you. I said, what's going on? He said, can you come over for a coffee? It was like around 10.45 p.m. I drove to his, to his house, to his uh, print shop, sorry. He sat down, had coffee, and he's telling me he got coffee. He said, for the past week, I've never had so many problems in my life in the past one week. I said, what is it? He had a call from the mayor's office, from the municipality's office, from the police station office. All these mayors and mayor's office and municipality's office, they're being pressured by the community to take down the billboard or they would take it down by force. So I asked him, I said, what are you willing to do? He says, I'm not going to take it down. He said, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, I left the print shop uh, uh, owner. He called me back 20 minutes later. He said, they cut the electricity wire off of the billboard. Somebody intentionally did it. And he you mean said, just like chop the wires? Chop the wires. So they sent someone to fix the wires. By the time they got there, the owner of the place that the wire box is rented from, he was told, do not give electricity or you will have repercussions. So I'm, I'm hearing this on the phone. I'm thinking, this is in Bethlehem. People are, are threatening landlords who own this electrical box. And, and it didn't stop there. And they said their focus is to take it down. And I get a call from the mayor's office. From the municipal, I got a call from the mayor, municipality's office. And they're saying, you're causing a lot of problems. You're causing a lot of issues and so forth. And I said, I don't see anything wrong with the statement. It's a biblical statement. Long story short, um, for 14 nights, 14 nights, we rented a car, rented a generator, rented two guys to guard the generator and the car, and we lit up the billboard with, hand, with handheld uh, LED lights going back and forth on the billboard <laughs> for 14 nights for about six hours every evening. And a few times it ran out of diesel. We had to buy diesel and quickly run, fill up the generator with diesel and lit up the billboard. And that was a story. The, 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 the cool thing, about, the neat thing about it is it doesn't stop there, Brother Martin. If the billboard was supposed to come down December the 30th because somebody else had rented it in January. For some reason, they couldn't take down the billboard. One time, the, the crane broke down. Another time, they had a, pro another time they had a problem. Uh, the third time they tried to take it down, we had, they had the largest snowstorm since back in the 90s. I mean, it, it, one thing after another where they could not take down the billboard. The billboard, Brother Martin, stayed up all the way till June the 18th. <laughs> it's from, from December all the way till June 18th. It said, uh, Merry Christmas with Jesus Christ born through it. So it, it was an amazing, amazing time period. Of course, the cost of it uh, for us tripled. Uh, but again, that's where people stepped in and, and uh, helped us out. And we, so right now, by faith, uh, by faith, by blinded faith, um, we, uh, we have reserved the billboard again this year. And since June, since June till today, nobody's rented the billboard from the guy. I think people are trying to p punish him for renting us the billboard. So I called him up last week and I said, we're putting up a billboard. So we will have a billboard as well in Bethlehem. People can also get on the website and see well, it as well. Will it be the, the same as last year? It will be a different, uh, a different message. Again, this year, we're, getting, we're telling people it's not about, uh, it's not about the archbishops or the priests. It's not about the buildings. It's not about the churches. It's about Jesus. Because uh, I think a lot of times we are focused on the human beings who wear who wear the, the, the Christian cloth and, and forget that it's not about the cloth. It's not about the human beings. It's about Jesus. So we're telling people this season is about Jesus and we're bringing him back. So that's, that's kind of slogan going to be. And they can, if, if you're watching today, we've got uh, uh, Pastor Steve Curry in the studio who's talking to us uh, for this special Christmas program. Now, I know that there will be people watching who are going through battles and uh, having a hard time because for some people, Christmas isn't always a nice time. They, whether it's with family or with the circumstances you're, go, you, you're in at the moment, it's a, a tough time. And uh, what would you say to them? Because you've experienced not just with the billboard, but with the church with the, being set on fire at the front and also another, a lot of other issues. And um, uh, how, what would you say to those who are watching today who are going through a, this is a, which should be a joyous time, is actually a very tough time. Yeah. You know, Brother Martin, I, I want to talk to, to, the, to those of you that are going through a difficult time. You know, there, I don't think a lot of times there is no a remedy for immediate, for immediate, you know, right now solution for, for all problems. But what there is, is there is a remedy of faith. That's what I call a remedy of faith, where if you stand strong to your faith, the Bible says that just shall live by faith. 
Uh, I always tell people, I wish, I wish there is a drink. You can just drink and everything, everything will be nice and all problems will disappear and go away. But we, we're living in a reality of life today. We know that doesn't exist. But what you can drink, what you can eat is the Word of God. What you can do is you can spend time with God. I think when you're going through a difficult time, it's important to understand that you are here on earth, number one, temporarily. I think it's important to understand that you are a citizen of heaven before you're a citizen of earth. And, and then number three, I want to remind those viewing that Jesus Christ promises, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And you have to understand, like it talks about in, in, in 1 Corinthians, that no trial that comes your way, Jesus Christ said, no trial, Paul talked about it, that comes your way, where Christ is, is not going to give you the over, overcoming spirit. And, and there is no trial, tribulation you are going through that you cannot overcome, that, that is stronger than you. And that is my challenge to you today. Even you're going through today, this Christmas day, the Christmas season, and this Christmas, and I've been talking about Christmas for the past month, you know, past four weeks, I've been talking about the season of Christmas um, and, and the season of what the reason is. And if you remember, you remind yourself, remind the kids, remind your family, just kick back, sit back, and look around you and realize that you're blessed. Compare yourself to what others don't have. You compare yourself to what others don't, can't do. There are Christians around the world today that can't even put up a light. There are Christians, Christians today around the world that can't even mention the name of Jesus. Um, there are Christians around the world today that have to worship and sing in, in, in a small group, just like this, two, four or five people. They would whisper, they would whisper the, the, the Christmas hymn. They would whisper the, 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 the Micah 5-2 and they would whisper uh, the Gospels of Matthew uh, and Luke. It would talk about the birth of Christ. And my challenge to you today is to understand that look at what others don't have so you can appreciate what God is giving you. And that's my challenge to you is uh, there is hope. There is hope. And Jesus Christ said, um, a, a great is he that's in us and he's in the world. You know, um, there's, there's trials, tribulations in the, in the world, but uh, I've overcome the world through Christ. And that is my challenge to you. To remember, Christ's birth uh, wasn't uh, the end. It was only the beginning. And, uh, the, you know, the persecution side is often very forgotten in, in the yeah. Christian life and faith that people in the West, um, but you know, I know that people will be watching and will be going through things at this time, and there'll be people out there who, who are, you know, maybe very lonely. And uh, but that's what you have to face, isn't it? the reality of of the suffering. being of suffering for the for the in, in the Arab world and in the in the in Israel uh, for the. For the believers that you know, there's a, there's a lot of suffering. There is a lot, Brother Mark. In fact, when you mentioned suffering and you mentioned the word, two things that stood out to my heart right now that spoke to me. One is suffering and alone. You know, I remember I, I tell people, I go back to them when I'm, when I'm 816. 860, the young man came to us in the city of Bethlehem. He lived outside the city of Bethlehem in a, in a, in a Muslim village. Came to us wanting to learn about Jesus Christ. For two and a half weeks, I discipled him. For two and a half weeks, we talked about the Bible and, and, and so forth. But he disappeared. So a couple of things went through my mind is one, I was a bad Bible teacher. That's why I never came back. <laughs> Another thing went through my mind is that he was a traitor. I didn't know what happened to him. All I know is for two and a half weeks, we did the Bible studies and programs and I gave him an Arabic Bible. But I didn't realize that his mom found his Bible and she gave it to his uncles. For three days, brother of mine, for three days, they locked him up in his bedroom. They unwinded a metal hanger and they began to beat him up over and over again and to deny Jesus, deny Jesus. He's disgracing the family honor. He's disgracing the honors, disgracing his religion and so forth. Not one single time would, would he deny Jesus. He could tell him, Jesus changed me. Jesus changed me. Jesus changed me. And I remember when, with all this happening, I didn't know anything. Well, any of this was happening. His uncle said that he's been brainwashed. We need to go after the people that are discipling him. I remember I was walking down the church street. They knew I was the one that's doing discipleship with them. Walking down the church street towards a church in Bethlehem. And uh, one person comes up to me while I'm walking, walking slowly towards our building. He says, are you Stephen? I said, yes. And while talking to him, I felt like something burning in the back of my head. I flinched the back of my hair like this, and I looked at the palm, palm, palm in my hand, and there was blood there. Everything happened so quickly. I turned around, there's about six or seven guys there with metal chains and wooden sticks in their hands. They put me to the ground. They began to beat me up over and over and over again. And as that beating came on my body, I remember I, you know, the names were calling me infidel traitor. They were calling me infidel traitor, infidel traitor. While I was being beat to the ground, I remember I said, Lord, if you get me through this, I would love you even more. That's what I said. I said, Lord, if you get me through this, I would love you even more. When I said that statement, I tell people, I felt like a white blanket just cover my body. I felt... I felt safer than, than I ever have. I felt closer to God, Christ than I ever have. In fact, what those seven men were intending to do is trying to scare me from talking about Jesus. But all they did is they drew me closer to Him. 
because when I called on his name, he showed up. And number two, when I needed him, he was there. And number three, what it made me realize is that there are seven more people like them. These are seven people I could win to Christ by loving them. And also what it did, it put a big paradigm shift in my life. The paradigm shift in my life was this, Brother Martin, is that the enemy to me no longer was a people or religion or, or skin color. The enemy became Satan and evil himself. And if I began to understand that evil and Satan is in people, not people themselves, then I started to love people and started to look at people differently. I was able to reach people that beyond my imagination, able to sit down to talk to people about Jesus Christ beyond I could ever imagine. And all that because of that beating. And I, I came out of that beating stronger than ever. And in fact, because of that beating, today we have over nine active ministries throughout the land. Because of that beating now, we are ministering in, ministering in areas like Jenin, like Gaza, very hostile areas. We are going in there doing Bible services, Bible preaching, home visitations, baptisms, and so forth. All simply because I say, because of Christ, allow me to go through that beating to make me understand how it is to suffer. But to make me understand that, wait a minute, I wasn't, I thought, if I was, if I thought that one time I was alone, Definitely I'm not alone now because I sense Christ there when I called on him when he put that white blanket over my body. And that is that is the, the what Christianity is going through today, whether it be physical beatings. And there's many others are suffering, are suffering or have suffered much more than I have. But that is what I, I lean from my life is that we have to keep moving forward. And then as I think what Jesus Christ said in, in, his, in his birth, see Jesus Christ was not welcomed in Bethlehem. He wasn't welcomed. And guess what? Christ isn't welcomed in many areas around the world either today. What do we do? Do we either one, give up? Or, or number two, we stay per persistent and be courageous to, to remind people what is the season for this reason, and it's Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for coming in today. We're out of time, Stephen. It's been great to have you with us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this special Christmas special uh, in the last day's television program. And remember, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter. Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In The Last Days.